The border is in crisis, and now the House Speaker is demanding some answers and some action from Joe Biden over at the White House. But the question is, at the White House, does Joe Biden even know what's going on? There was a clip that came out yesterday. John Kirby got asked about this. He was asked, has the president actually seen the videos? Has he seen the footage of what is happening at the border? Because if he did, and he's just kind of sitting on his hands, then that is a big problem for all of us. And so this was a great question. We've got a ton of footage that is out there. Even MSNBC, you can see see here they were even posting about this like man this is a big big deal most I've ever seen even they're concerned about it and the rest of this is just more reaction we got Byron Donalds and others we also have a letter from Johnson who is sending this one over to President Biden and so we're going to start off by asking ourselves does Joe even know what the heck is going on here are they trying to keep him away from the actual news you know do they just show up a briefing and they say uh the border has you know a couple illegal immigrants coming across not a big deal under all under control that's your morning briefing you know and he just goes oh sounds good maybe he doesn't even know so here is what john kirby tells us he says yeah that actually is true i don't know what they're telling him has president biden seen photos and videos from the past week of the sea of people crossing into this country illegally i understand he's probably been briefed on it but it's he's seen photos and videos of it actually happening i can't attest to what the content is of the material he gets every day but he has been kept apprised and briefed of course by the domestic and national security teams on this but what's in that content. I mean, I'm not part of those discussions. Can't tell what's actually in there because it is not something he sees. Maybe there is no footage. Maybe there is no video there that he just gets some numbers and a report and, you know, he can't really process much information. So it's just all being hidden from him. Maybe. Now, Johnson says there should be something done here. The House already passed HR2 more than six months ago, but Senate Democrats left town without taking any action, saying, Mr. President, border security starts with you. It's time to take action and we'll read the full letter in a minute. But this is even MSNBC concerned about this. You can see they're there on scene and it is just hordes of people every single day coming in. Another thing is these crowds here in Eagle Pass have never been this large during my reporting. This is the most people I've ever seen in Eagle Pass and other reporters, colleagues working other parts of the border in Arizona, in Hakumba near San Diego. Tell me the same thing. We have these conversations and the conversation is always, well, I've never seen this number of migrants arriving. And we know from the reports coming from the government with these numbers. So we have the number of apprehensions, the numbers of encounters, everything is spiking. So we don't know what this will mean moving forward. We just know that the numbers are much larger as the resources are spread thin. Another Lots of people, even MSNBC can't hide it. And so what is to be done? Well, like nothing, apparently. They just keep shipping people inside the United States. Now, Byron Donalds is not happy about this. He says, look, we're actually asking other resources like prison guards to provide transportation to unvetted illegal immigrants saying that they are not set up for that right this is part of that conversation they are not on planes anymore they're down at the southern border I spoke to Sonia Lavasco she's the executive director of the Air Marshals National Council and listen to what she said about the new tasks that Air Marshals have been given watch this nothing has changed since we reported on this since Thanksgiving we're still down there doing the same duties we are doing one thing new Carly we're now driving the illegal immigrants to the airport to get on the aircraft that we're not on. It's very ironic that we're ushering people that we haven't even identified that got a notice to appear. You know, they don't have to have a real ID to enter the airport. And they've also created Mr. Pekoski, a special lane for the illegal immigrants at the airport now. So the air marshals are dropping them off at the aircraft so they can get into a special aisle so they can get on the aircraft without any air marshals being present. So the air marshals are supposed to keep us safe. They're being asked to drive illegals to there. Also, can we just talk about this is the busiest time, busiest travel season there is and we don't have air marshals on the plane. And you're being knocked out of your seat, perhaps, because there's some illegal immigrant yeah. that wants... Yeah, and that's what's happening. Byron Donald says, you know, air marshals are still at the border, but not to aid CPP. They're aiding in transport. They're not stopping anybody. They're not slowing the problem down. They're just facilitating the invasion. So Byron Donald's unhappy about it. But what is the White House doing? Not much of anything. Here is Corrine Jean-Pierre says, you know, it's kind of just normal stuff here. Don't worry about it. 10,000 plus per day, not a big deal. Okay, it's just part of the seasonal flow. It's Christmas after all. That is also, you know, is important is the message that we have to send to, to smugglers, right? We have to be be very, very mindful What's the because message? they also put out
about misinformation. Come in. So we try to be mindful there as well. And what we're seeing here at the border, the migration flow, increased migration flow, certainly, you know, it ebbs and flows. And we're at a time of the year where we're seeing more at the border. And it's not unusual. This is an immigration system that has been broken for decades. And the president has taken this very seriously to try to do more. That's why we have the comprehensive immigration policy, a legislation that the president put forth on day one. So yes, there is more to be done, but we need the help of Congress to get that done. Nothing Congress has already passed some stuff, as we're going to read from Mike Johnson in a minute, Kareem. He can do it himself unilaterally. Well, we, I mean, look, we asked for more border patrol, right? And he was able to get 24,000 law enforcement folks at the border. That's unprecedented. We asked for more. And you got Republicans in it's Congress, who, especially in the House, who want to cut that. They actually want to do the opposite of what the president is trying to do. And so, look, the president has done everything that he can, right, on his own. There's clearly diplomatic conversation happening with AMLO and other folks, other leaders in the region. We're going to continue to have those conversations just to make sure that we deal with the flow. But we also need funding. We also need funding to deal with the border security, which is what we're trying to do right now with these negotiations that are happening with senators right now. All right. So they're obviously not doing anything. Here is what Mike Johnson said. He says, look, not true. All right. December 21st from the Congress of the United States, Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson from Louisiana. He says, all right, Biden, idiot. The southern border of our nation is being overrun by the Customs and Border Patrol, and they are being overrun to the breaking point. This catastrophe, some might call it an insurrection, requires your administration's full attention and commitment, particularly since Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer adjourned the Senate yesterday for the year of 2023 without considering our bill that we already passed called HR2, the Secure Border Act of 2023. The Republicans have already done something about this, and you have left the Senate without taking any legislative action to address this matter. So stop blaming Republicans, saying, hey, Joe, in fiscal year 2023, in case you didn't know, Border Patrol encountered 2.48 million illegal aliens at our southern border in one year, two and a half. And so we know Wyoming is 500,000 people, give or take, and so that's five Wyomings that have come in. Now, in addition, there were 670,000 so-called gotaways, right? And those numbers are probably a third of what the reality is. On average, more than 8,400 illegal aliens entered our country every single day, and that number is now 12,000, 14,000 plus when you look at it. Now, while those numbers are shocking, they are even projected to be worse in 2024, since you're not doing anything. Just this week, the record for illegal crossings in a single day was broken yet again, and that was 12,000 and 14,000 as it just kept going. Now, the wide open border, says Mike Johnson, has caused unspeakable human tragedy for migrants and certainly for our own citizens. During 2023, Border Patrol seized enough fentanyl to kill the entire U.S. population, every single one of us dead. And fentanyl poisoning is now the leading cause of death for Americans aged 18 to 45, okay? So for all the people who are like, lock the country down because of COVID and blah, 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 they're perfectly okay with the fentanyl poisoning happening. In fact, if you want to shut the border down, they call you a racist. They want to lock you down in your home, but not lock down the border. Countless children and adults have been victims of human trafficking and cartels have been emboldened and enriched. Local communities have been devastated and terrorists and dangerous criminals have entered illegally and dispersed across our country. We are now more vulnerable to a terrorist attack on our homeland than ever. Saying all of this, Biden is a direct result of you. You have clearly undermined American sovereignty and security by ending the remain in Mexico policy, by reinstating catch and release, by suspending asylum cooperative agreements with other nations, you ignore existing restraints on the abuse of parole, and you halted the border wall. You also undermine ICE and their core mission, and you even used a smartphone app to facilitate the release of border crossers into the United States. Foreseeing this catastrophe, the House of Representatives led in developing reforms to secure America's borders. We passed HR2 more than six months ago, but Senate Democrats have refused to act on it. Now, while a bipartisan group of senators have begun extensive negotiations over the past few weeks to find a compromise, they have not yet been able to finalize an agreement. Statutory reforms designed to restore operational control at our border must be enacted, but the crisis at our southern border has deteriorated to such an extent that significant action can no longer wait. It must start now, and it must start with you, Joe. I urge you to immediately take executive actions available to you under existing immigration laws to stem the tide of illegal immigration. Immediate executive actions could include the following. Don't hold your breath on any of these.
penalties and catch and release. Either turn them back or detain them when they're entering. Cease exploitation of the parole authority and ensure it is granted solely on a case-by-case -case basis instead of urging parole for entire classes of aliens. Reinstate previous and pursue new asylum cooperative agreements and begin to negotiate with Mexico to reinstitute remain in Mexico. Expand the use of expedited removal so that more aliens are screened and immediately removed if they cannot demonstrate asylum eligibility. And immediately renew construction on the border wall. I also urge you to utilize the law to regain operational control of the border. The provision empowers the president to suspend entry of all aliens or any class of aliens or impose the entry of aliens if they're appropriate. If the president finds that this would be detrimental to the interest of the United States. But they're not concerned about that. They want, I think, you know, these people to come in because at some point they're going to claim that they are eligible voters in some form, whether it's a mass amnesty or even if it's just local amnesty. It is being done to change the fabric of the electorate, to change the fabric of the country. There's no real other explanation for it. But where are these people going? Well, Bill Malugin, who's been there, says a man from Guinea who had just crossed illegally into Arizona says he's going to Philadelphia. When I asked why, he said, I don't know, I don't know. He pulled out a piece of paper with an address written on it where he's supposed to go. We looked it up. It's a local community center. So they just pick people up and they just say, hey, guess here where you're going? Philadelphia. We need to win Pennsylvania. And so why don't you go over there to Philadelphia and we'll let you know why when you get there. Where are you from? Guinea Conakry. Where? Guinea Conakry. Guinea. Okay. And where in the U.S. do you want to go to? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Why Philadelphia? I have paper. I don't know the place. Let me check the place. I want to check the place. Okay. So just an address in Philadelphia to go to? Okay. All right. So just some, you know, random community center. They don't even know why they're going. What the purpose is. Sounds good to me. I'll go to Pennsylvania. I'll go to New York. I'll go wherever you tell me to go. What's it matter? Now, here you see that people, so while they're shipping people elsewhere, people are fleeing. So, right, New York's having issues, Colorado's having issues, and they are just leaving these locations. So, new census data shows people from New York are bailing, right? So, as all the illegal immigrants are going there, all of the U.S. citizens are exiting. There's, okay, enough of this, right? Our cities can't support tens of thousands of people. Here is what Fox News was reporting. I mean, the latest U.S. census data shows more New Yorkers are moving out than anywhere else in the entire country. The new U.S. Census Bureau report showing the Empire State lost more than 100,000 people between July this year and the last. One of eight states which saw their populations fall this year behind New York or other Democrat-run states, California, Illinois, and Pennsylvania. Meanwhile, two Republican-led states, Texas and Florida, saw the largest population growth, followed by North Carolina, Georgia, and South Carolina. People are bailing and there is a realignment happening, right? I mean, I think people are going to be voting with their feet, especially as things continue to go this direction, resorting themselves, which is not a bad thing, right? All the blue people can go to blue states. All the red people can leave. So the recount posted this one, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. He is saying, you know what? We're just going to keep sending people, whether it's buses or planes or whatever. They are exiting Texas and they're going to go to these other states. They said they're sanctuary cities. They said that they want them. So here is Texas. We're going to put them on planes. We're going to put them on trains. We're going to put them on buses. We're going to do whatever we can. We're going to get them out of Texas. I want to send them all to Martha's Vineyard. I want to send them all to Delaware and Rehoboth. I want to send them all to where they start feeling the pain that our citizens feel on the border and across Texas every day. That's right. And so Texas is responding. Obviously, it is absolute madness down there. You can see the scene. Even MSNBC is admitting it every single day. Never seen anything like this in Eagle Pass. And so what's going to happen? Is Joe Biden even aware of this situation? Is the Senate going to do anything at any time ever, even next year? We'll see. But my friends, we'll be here continuing to cover this. It's a major issue. And I think as more and more Americans watch these videos, watch the tragedy that's happening there, they're going to be irritated about it. And of course, Donald Trump is the person who has been right about this from day one in 2016. And they are now hopefully starting to realize it. <music>